I, I tweeted last night. I'm just watching all, and Jason Benetti, by the way, just uh, texted me during our show here, and I totally agree with Jason. Like, after all of these games in the environments, and he and I are getting to do the Civil War and the Apple Cup back-to-back and the Utah-Washington game and, and the SC-Utah game and all of these amazing environments, he just texted said, there's a sort of hollowness that comes from the portal and all these opt-outs and everything that now comes into the fold with college football. And it's not only hollow, I think it is totally unsustainable. This model that we have right now, and and this is channeling a little bit of Jake Dickert. This is channeling a little bit of Oregon State. This is channeling a little bit, I don't know, Bozeman, Montana yesterday, who saw three of its starting offensive linemen go in the transfer portal because they're going to get a chance to transfer out of Bozeman and into the FBS at some level. They've taken you know, their, their time and their opportunity and their development at Montana State and said, thanks, but no thanks. I have no business or desire to finish my career here. I'm going to go on and I'm going to look out for totally my best interest. And that's all this is right now. It just feels like, and this comes from somebody that's not just an old man, Mike, yelling at the clouds. Oh, it was so much better then. Oh, and we used to play last century. There was something about paying your dues and sacrifice and all that. No, I understood the old ways were archaic too. It was out of whack. It was out of balance. Some of the ridiculousness of the 900 page NCAA rule book that was, that was not sustainable either. And it, and it proved that. And the Supreme Court proved that and said, this is dumb. This is antitrust. And this is not, this is not how our country works. Um, with the people that are playing the sport getting very, very little while others are making a lot. So this is not an argument to go back to the way it used to be. It is just simply telling you that this current model of everybody out for themselves and only themselves is not sustainable. If it was, the billion-dollar industries that are pro sports would follow this model. Mm-hmm. If if free agency every single year was a good model and a sustainable model, don't you think the NFL and Major League Baseball and the NBA, who are all about greed and all about money, and that is all that is driven by at the end of the day, don't you think they would take on those models? I think they would have. But they know that this is not you know, in their leagues, collectively bargained amongst the players and the owners. They know that there's got to be guardrails, that there've got to be constraints. Otherwise, you get the kind of chaos that we're getting right now in college football. Well, but this is the NCAA being sore losers and wiping their hands of this and saying, you know, we lost out on NIL. Fine. They do whatever you want, right? Where was the NCAA coming in and saying, hey, we do want to work in NIL and put some restrictions on it. Instead, it was, all right, fine, you win this lawsuit, you embarrass us in this huge litigation, and we have to pay all these back dues, the video game, and uh, mm-hmm. all these things, and NIL is, is fair game. All right, there are no restrictions. They can't. They couldn't because they'd get sued out of their mind. I mean, they just they had to. There, there was no ground for them to stand on. You want structure? You want guardrails? You want us to oversee all these different fiefdoms? We're trying. That's Well, that's their job, right? They, they were trying to, and then ultimately these fiefdoms become much, much more powerful. Ultimately, these fiefdoms known as the SEC and the Big Ten make their hundreds of millions of dollars, right, and, and distribute it to their members. And they say, well, who are you? We don't need you. And they play by their own sets of rules down in the South, which they did for decades and decades, uh, giving and shoveling away money to recruits and to others and operate in different fashion. And so these fiefdoms grew to a level, and, and the NCAA, Mike, was never – never of the structure in the infrastructure to handle this kind of money, this kind of power. And when the Supreme Court came in, they said, well, we can't play. We're going to get sued left and right. So go ahead, go ahead, figure it out. Now you all go figure it out. SEC, Big Ten, Pac-12, go figure it out. Institutions go figure it out. And right now nobody's figuring it out because right now the cheating is rampant. The inducement is rampant. And don't tell me, and I know there's people saying, Brock, it's always been this way. No, it's not always been this way. There have certainly been some institutions that operated in some of these realms, but nothing like this. Nothing like Cam Ward having 10 different seven-figure deals that he's sorting through. Nothing like all of these quarterbacks that have gone into the portal or offensive linemen that have gone into the portal for Montana State that are all just looking out for what can I get? What can I get for mine right now? It just doesn't work. That kind of, that kind of mentality in any business, it just doesn't work without guardrails and constraints. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, I have a tough time saying, hey, it's bad that Cam Ward can go capitalize 
on what he's worth as a player. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying it's unsustainable. It I'm not yeah, saying individually it it's bad at all. I'm saying it is totally unsustainable. So what happens then? That's and that's a true question because yeah, there are there are vast differences in the SEC and you know the Mountain West or all these teams that even have been poached. I mean the Pac-12, the the remains of it are, are here because of that. I don't know if you can say, hey, it's, it's too late to go back. So, I mean, sorry. I, mean, I don't know if you can say, look, we have to go back somehow because you're not putting, you're not you know, putting the genie the back in the bottle. In the you're you're nope. not closing Pandora's box. No, I so, just saw the new NCAA president. So what comes of I, it? Yep, yeah. I just saw him come out, and, and this is the first little foray, and this is the first little step you see just this morning, just announcing that, well, maybe these new, maybe we should have those that operate by a different um, checkbook. Maybe those should have their own division. And maybe they should be able to collectively amongst themselves figure out NIL, put some constraints in. So this is the first, this is what you're going to see. And this was my fear all the way along and why I argued and scream and the veins pop out mm -hmm. in my forehead and in my neck when I screamed at Salk over the last 20 years. You want this? You want total free market and total, total capitalism? You want to undo all of these rules and all these regulations? You want to deregulate everything? What will ultimately happen, more people will be hurt than helped. There will be the cam wars and there will be those that make a lot of money, but Ultimately, what is going to happen then to all of the other athletes? What are going to happen to all of the sports at the Olympic level at these institutions? What is going to happen when 30 separate? What happens to the other 110? What happens to them? What happens to their programs? What happens to their network deals? What happens to their revenue? Oh, it'll be fine, says Jay Billis. Oh, it'll be fine. Oh, really? Talk to my friends in Corvallis and Pullman today and tell me how they think it's going to be fine. Oh, it'll be just fine. Look at the way Division Two and Three, they've operated under a totally different model, right? They don't have the scholarships. They don't have the financial aid. They don't have those things. I, I heard that for so many years, and I would always scream back at all of them. Okay, if you just think there's this endless supply of money that this NCAA is just taking and not giving to anybody else, you just wait. Go deregulate it and watch what's going to happen. It's not going to be good, and it's, as I said, just not sustainable.